Hello. Oops, I should look at the camera. Hello. I am talking more about these hologram fans due to some questions from a couple of YouTube users and one of the Halloween forums I'm in. Uh, they both asked about doing a kind of a DIY for um, how to get the software or your own content on there. So this fan is running a bunch of atmosphere effects uh, files that I converted and this fan was a green screen uh, download I found on YouTube and uh, did some modification to here I'm going to show you how to get the software running and configured each of the uh, fans came with a micro SD card and a, a uh, little micro SD to USB reader. I'll show you in the small fan, which is this one with the single, the single arm, 224 pixels. Uh, came, their software looked like this. The 3DS player and a video tutorial. So the, there's some videos showing you how to do it. That's how I learned to do it, but I'm gonna put these both all together in here. So to install the software, uh, I just copied it, uh, did a short, rather I did a shortcut on the desktop to this file. And the same with the large fan over here has this media record.exe file. Pretty simple. So for the first fan, the small one, I am going to use this video. This is the atmosphere effects clip from the Phantasm collection. So with both of these softwares, you have to pick the correct model first. And in this case, it's standard definition, 224 pips. Then you pick which file you want to use. In this case, we're going to use Green Skull. And then it asks you for an output file, where you want to save it and what you want to call it. I like to put all my things into this folder here. And the 224 reminds me which model it is. As you can see, I have some atmosphere effects stuff already in here. So we're going to call this AFX Green Skull. And what will happen is it will load a looping clip right here. This red circle is the perimeter of the fan display. So you can see the skull would appear pretty small on the fan. So what you do is you scroll. In this case, I'm using a touchpad. So you pinch zoom to change the perimeter rather than changing the image. So I'm going to let it loop. Um, I like this, except I see I've got some gap at the bottom. So I'm going to move the perimeter up a little bit so that I could catch some more of the green fog at the top. Ideally, you don't want your image to extend past the boundary of the display. It'll give away where your display circle is. So if you keep it within the circle, you get this really nice hologram effect. So let's do one more run through. I like that. So now we just hit start in code. It's going to give you a countdown as you see it rendering. Now, don't worry. I know the image looks squash. It kind of freaked me out the first time, too. You can move this screen, but as soon as you let go, it jumps right back to its small uh, version. <clears throat> Power off. 
and it gives us a message that encoding is finished. And that's it. Now I would just go into where I saved it. And there it is, green skull. Let's move that onto uh, a memory card. And in here, you could see I had the floating skull at the beginning of the video. We're going to delete that. And I'm going to send this to the USB drive. And there it is, AFX Green Skull Binary. I assume that's what it means. I don't actually know. Load the memory card, and we'll turn it on. When it first starts up, it takes a moment to synchronize. But once it does, there you go. So now I'm going to leave this run while I load it into the large fan. I've got another memory card here just to get this started. So here's the second software for the large fan. It's called Media Recode. And just like with the small fan, make sure you pick the correct model. I've encoded with the wrong model and because of a mismatch in pixel count it only shows the center of the image and uh, it looks like it zoomed in. Kind of freaked me out at first. This guy, if you pick the wrong uh, model, it'll just be a scrambled bit of color and pixels. I think that's the most common mistake people make when trying to load their own uh, video clips is they didn't pick the right model and so they think it just didn't work. So again, make sure you pick the right model before you start the process. So as before, I'm going to load Green Skull and this software does not give you a video clip. Uh, it only gives you a thumbnail. I don't like that. I like seeing the full range of motion so I could watch for collision with the edge. Uh, also, what's different is when you zoom, you're zooming the actual image rather than the, um, the edge of the display. So in this case, I'm going to leave a little bit of gap up here because a gap won't show up as anything. It'll remain black. Uh, I can see some of this mist comes down near the bottom of the circle, so I want to keep that intact. Also, you have to choose your output file. I'm going to put that as a uh, green skull. Green. Oops, skull normal. Now, I left some uh, green skull big and small. I'm going to load those onto this fan so you can see the difference if you don't zoom it correctly, if you zoom it too much, how it'll show the circle, or if you just leave it default where it's the little character in the big circle, what it'll look like on the fan. But I'm calling this one normal because it'll, it'll display, I think, normally. Now you'll see, once you hit transform, this one encodes much faster. And that's it for this. Also, what I think is interesting is you can play these files and they have the audio with them and everything. As you can see, it encodes it into a square format. And so this is good to look at to make sure you've got no collision with the perimeter. Okay. So let's see what's on the other uh, USB drive. Okay, nothing. Um, we'll put these three guys on there.
And so these have audio. And what I'm going to do is turn on a Bluetooth receiver because this will synchronize with the um, with, with the display here. Oops. I still had a uh, memory card in there. All right, so we'll turn this guy on. I don't know which order these are going to display, so it, All right, this is the one that was zoomed too big. As you can see, it's just an illuminated circle. It's not very impressive at all. Yeah, that disappearance was kind of cool. So let's see, the next one might be small. Nope, this is the normal one. And I can see I did get a little bit too close. Now, I'm up close, so I can see this. Can you see the peripheral? You can? Yeah. So after seeing that, I would re-render this a little bit smaller. But not this small. So that gives you an idea, I hope, of how easy this stuff is to convert. Literally, you open the software that comes with each fan, you bring in the file, you resize it appropriately, and then you hit transform or convert or something similar, because I'm sure yours would be a bit different. Um, let me turn these guys off. and. Um, I got these fans off of Amazon, both of them actually. And I'm sure if you look, I'm sure if you look on eBay or AliExpress, uh, you could find them cheaper. Uh, I picked Amazon because I wanted to get them early enough to do some experimenting to see, because I didn't know how easy it would be to load video onto this. And that's basically everything. Um, I hope that this was. Stop screwing around. I'm not. Didn't you turn it on? No. I don't have the remote. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, I guess I could unplug it. Yeah. I don't know. Just, so oh, let me. Hey, um, 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 um. Hello, Eric. Um, hi. I didn't record this. What is, oh. what is the. You totally stole this idea from Jaza. You mean that art channel that I really like? It was his video that gave you the idea to do this in the first place. Well, okay, I actually did find the fan because of him, and I saw the potential Just in it. Just remember to tell everyone. Thanks for watching. Oh, yes. Thanks for watching.